नमस्कार फ्रेंड्स एंड वेलकम टू शुभोदय जी के एंड करंट अफेयर्स चैनल इफ यू आर न्यू टू दिस चैनल प्लीज सब्सक्राइब द चैनल वॉज द वीडियो टिल द एंड लाइक इट एंड शेयर इट सो इन दिस वीडियो आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द एवोल्यूशन ऑफ द कंप्यूटर्स फ्रॉम अबैकस टू आर्टिफिशियल इंटेलिजेंस इनिशियली अबैकस वॉज यूज फॉर द कैलकुलेशन मोस्टली इन टू थाउजेंड फाइव हंड्रेड बी सी दीज एडवांसड कैलकुलेशन वे बीन मेड बाई द अबैकस इवन टूडे वी आर यूजिंग दट फॉर द स्पीड कैलकुलेशन नेक्स्ट वन इज नैपर्स बोन so napier's bone was introduced in the in 16th century so napier's bone is a manually operated calculating device and it was created by john napier from scotland so uh, it was initially made with bones so it has got that name next one is slide rule device so this slide rule device it was introduced in 1633 ad and it is just like a mechanical analog computer it is used for the multiplications and divisions it also supports logarithm calculation Next one is Pascal's calculator. It is a mechanical calculator which was invented by the Blaise Pascal in 1642. So mostly this Pascal's calculator it is used for the arithmetical calculation. In 18th century, power loom calculator was introduced. So this power loom calculator it was invented by Joseph Mary Jacquard. It was the first read-only memory device. It is used to fit a loom that simplifies the process of manufacturing the textiles with a complex pattern. In 1822, a British mathematician named Charles Babbage has introduced the automatic calculating machine. So, this has given a basic idea for the modern day computer. That's the reason Charles Babbage is called the father of computers. in 1940s the first generation computers were introduced so here the computer means it is a electronic device which stores the data and recalls the data when we required so this first generation computers they were made by the vacuum tubes for switching the circuits and magnetic drums for the memory but they were again in the large size and occupied the mostly more space and the consumption of the electricity also very high that is the reason it's it has become a very expensive the second generation computers were introduced in the 1950s so these computers they are made up of transistor instead of vacuum tubes so in first generation the computers they were made by the vacuum tubes and they were replaced by the transistors so during this time the high level the languages like cobol were developed the third generation computers were introduced in 1960s and these computers they were made up of integrated circuits and silicon chips so instead of transistors these silicon chips and integrated circuits were introduced even separate keyboards and monitors were been introduced this time the fourth generation computers were been introduced in 1970s so these computers they are made up of microprocessors so during this time the size of the computer also became very small and even the internet is also introduced in this image we can see the development of computers from first generation to fifth generation so this generation computers they are based on parallel processing hardware and artificial intelligence the fifth generation computers these are the initiated by the japan's ministry of international trade and industry which was began in 1982 these fifth generation computers with artificial intelligence like robotics they can take the decisions and think like us if we see the classification of computers they have been divided into three types by purpose by type and by size if we see in the by purpose so in this there is a two type there is a general purpose and a special purpose and in type there are the three types that is analog computers digital computers and hybrid computers so hybrid computers are the mixture of analog and digital computers and if you see by size so in this category the micro computers mini computers mainframe computers and the super computers all this comes in the size wise computer so in this image we can see the classification of the computers accordingly so analog computers are the machines which were earlierly used for the measuring the pressure temperature voltage speed and weight 
A mainframe computer is generally used in banking sector, insurance companies, manufacturing industries, and uh, many more uh, multinational companies. And finally comes towards the supercomputer. So these supercomputers are mainly used for the special purposes. We can see for weather forecasting, space science and uh, weapon and uh, missile designings just like uh, in DRDO. Uh, then uh, for the making the animations and graphics for the movies. So like this there are so many uses. Thank you friends for watching this video. Please click on the like button, share it with your friends and support this channel. Jai Hind.